Welcome to the first season of Ancient Anecdotes powered by Listen Cup. This is your host Ramnathan Ayer and this is Lalita Ramnathan. Lalita ma, where are you going? It's holiday today, pa. I'm going to cuddle up with a bowl of banana chips and read my favorite books and chilling in the vibe. Wait, wait. See, your school has sent some homework for you. Come, let's sit together and do it. Can't I do it later, pa? I'm anyhow on leave. What's the hurry? Oh my god. First you told me I have to take a bath. Then you told me I have to do my sadhana. After that, I was hoping to meet all my friends and have a fun day out. You said it's too hot now. Wait for the evening. And now I have to do my homework also. What injustice is this? <laughs> there, there. Pull yourself together, no? What needs to be done will have to be done. If you postpone it, your best laid plans will bend to ensure your responsibilities are done first. Either you do them willingly at first or later at a sheer cost. Because he postponed stuff, the great Sundaramurthy Nayanar had his marriage to Sugunavari called off and Shiva himself came down to call a halt to the marriage. Can you believe it? How awful! What's an eye in our pa? And who's Sundaramurti? Shiva usually blesses people to be happily married, isn't it? Was it a divine play Lord Shiva played on Sundaramurti Nayanar? Yes, we call it Thirivilayadal in Tamil. Sundarar didn't find it funny at first. You know what else is funny? My granddad told me this story exactly when I was putting my homework off as well. So, I guess this putting off thing runs in the family. You want to feel good only, no? Come, I'll tell you this story. But after this, you must sit with your books. Is that a deal? Yes, yes. I promise to do the homework. Now tell. There are going to be many characters and many places and everything in this. So, pay attention, okay? Okay, Pa. In the previous episode, we heard about Kashyapa Prajapati, a great devotee of Narayana. Today, we are going to see about a devotee of Lord Shiva. The word Nayanar is an ancient Tamil word that originally was Nayagan Margal. Nayagan means the hero or king, refers to Lord Shiva himself. And Margal means those who serve him. In this story, Sundarar's father, Sadenar, was the son of Arurar, who was the in charge of a place called Tirunavalur. This kingdom today is present near Ulundur Pete in Kallakuruchi district in Tamil Nadu. At some point in his old age, Arurar decided to devote himself and his wealth to the service of Lord Shiva and his devotees. At the time, Arurar's son Sadenar and Sadenar's wife Isagnanyar were blessed with a beautiful child who was named Nambi Arurar. What's his name then? Sundarar or Arurar? Patience, my love. Tirunavalur came under the management of the greater kingdom of Tirumunai Padi, current day Kadalur in Tamil Nadu, and was ruled by a Chola chieftain called Narasinga Munayarayar. He used to visit the old Arurar household often. What's a chieftain, Pa? Although a king himself, Narasinghar had pledged his loyalty to the Chola emperor Rajaditya Chola. That's why he is called as a chieftain. The 8th century BC was the time of the greater Choras. The entire South India was under their rules. The Chera and the Pallava dynasties were subservient to the great Choras at the time. You know, you have seen Ponyan Silvan too. Anyhow, back to the story. Narasinga Munayarayar was childless. He came one day to Arurar's house after he heard about the birth of a newborn. One look at the baby and Narasinghar wanted to adopt the baby. Sadayanar by this time wanted to follow his father in the service of the Lord and agreed to the adoption. Charmed by the young child's beauty, Narasinghar renamed the young child Sundaramurti or Sundarar in short. Sadayanar followed his father and proceeded to Thiruvennai Nallur and Sundarar remained back with Narasinghar. There is a grand Kripa Purishwarar temple dedicated to Lord Shiva in Thiruvennai Nallur. It is here in Thiruvennai Nallur that Arurar felt the omnipotence of Shiva. 
So the old Arurar donates all of his wealth to the temple by way of a palm leaf document. They didn't have state government stamp paper, no. The document stated that all of Arurar's further generations will serve the Lord of Vendainalur. Now pay attention here. We are going to come back to this point. Okay, Pa. Coming back to the main story on procrastination, the young Sundara realized that he had a flair for writing lovely verses at a very, very young age. But the Chora tutelage was rigorous right from the get-go. So Sundara postponed honing his poetry skills. Years roll on and a teenage Sundara realizes again at a temple function that he could play with the words beautifully when it comes to praising Lord Shiva. Sundarar yet again postpones writing something up then as well. Sundarar earned many distinctions in studies under the Chora tutelage and became of marriable age. Once again, he gets an urge to compose music on Lord Shiva, but he postpones the same again, thinking that he will pick this up after marriage. Procrastination Yes, soon his marriage was fixed to Sugunavari. On the day of his marriage, an old saint suddenly comes to the marriage hall and calls halt to the marriage. The old man claims that he has a document stating that Sundarar is his slave and as such is ineligible to marry without the old man's explicit permission. Sundarar looks shell-shocked as he least expected this. When he does manage to find his voice, Sundara refers to the old man who has come as being mad. Sundara calls him Pittan, which means madman in Tamil. The old man, however, stands his ground and says he has a manuscript to prove his claim. Sundara asks for this evidence and calls for a gathering of village elders to adjudicate the matter. The old man guffaws <laughs> and says, In this kingdom, everyone knows you and will side with you. Come with me to my native, Thiruvennainallur, and let us adjudicate the matter there. The evidentiary document is also there only. Then I will prove my claim over you. So they all set off to Thiruvennainallur. Appa, did they take a train? No, dear. Horse carts or by ox carts, I should think. Anyhow, in Vennainallur, the old man indeed produces the document. The elders in Thiruvennainallur agree the handwriting in the manuscript does match the old Arurar's writing in other state-recorded documents. The old man wins the debate and the matter is settled that Sundarar's marriage should be halted and that he should follow the old man instead. Remember the big Kripapurishwara temple in Thiruvannainallur? The old man takes Sundarar there. The old man demands that rather than marriage, Sundarar's life should now be devoted to spreading devotion among the masses through his beautiful verses. Sundarar is still battling with his failing wits. First, his carefully anticipated and planned marriage is rudely stopped. Now, this old man is giving free career advice. Do you like it when someone gives you advice that you haven't asked for? Sundarar was unable to brook this unexpected turn of events in his well-planned life. Find it familiar? You can't go out to play. Homework is also there. Don't remind me, Pa. The old man says, What great wonder it is, he who knows the past, present and future, and who is the very embodiment of Om, the primordial of all languages, has paid heed to your devotion and has come down to the mortal realm to listen to your prattle. Confused by all these events, Sundarar pleads to the old man to clarify his words. Legends say that the old man laughs out aloud and walks into the sanctum and vanishes there. The temple walls reverberated with the booming laughter of the old man. The simultaneous absence of the old man firmly gripped Sundarar's throat in a choking vacuum. What little sanity Sundarar thought he had vanishes along with the old man. Left with this loud and confused set of thoughts, Sundarar wonders, who was the old man? He just came out of nowhere, told him what his life's purpose was and vanished. Also, what was the document that the old man had produced? How did he get the document at all? Ooh, 
Was the document the one old Arura made about his future family serving the Lord? Was the old man Shiva himself? Did Sundaramurti Nayanar walk all the way with Lord Shiva from Navalur to Tiruvannainallur? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, one question at a time. Yes, with every passing second, it dawned on Sundarar that Shiva himself had chosen Sundarar as a Nayagan Mahar. Shiva had come down just to remind him that Sundarar's life true purpose was to bring light to others, even if it meant being made a laughing stock and being the wrong end of everyone's anger. In such cloudiness, Sundarar begs at the Lingam idol inside the temple to tell him how, how the Lord expected him to even speak, let alone sing something. Granddad used to tell that a formless voice then asked Sundarar to sing the praise of Lord Shiva with the first word Sundarar actually used to refer to the old man, Pittan. Swimming in a cloud of tears of devotion, Sundarar breaks out into the most legendary first verse ever. Pitta piraisudi perumane arulala yettal maravade ninaikindrein manattu unnai vaitai pennai tenbal vennai nallur arul turayul atta unak aalai ini allen enalame O oh Father, I have always been your slave. You have taken over my life so totally. Even what I think I want is actually what you deem for me to want. How then can I say, even for argument's sake, that I am not your very own? It is said that Sundarar travelled to 83 temples by foot in his lifetime. In times where travel agents and IRCTC was not there, this is quite an achievement, don't you think? Absolutely, Pa. He is counted among the Tevara mover the three poets who composed the Tevara Tirumurai, Appar, Sundarar and Sambandar. Sundarar's padigams or his poems are called as the Tirupattu. He also contemporarily composed a list of 60 legendary devotees of Shiva and the miracles that happened in their lives, called as the Tiruttondattogai. It is said that, taking this as reference, the Tamil poet Sekirar put together the Periyapuranam in the 8th century BC as an epic anthology of 63 devotees of Shiva. We will talk about the others very soon as well. Wow! Amazing story, Pa! But why should Shiva have to drastically stop Sundarar's marriage? Who knows? Maybe Lord Shiva felt that it was important for Sundarar's moving verses to quickly reach the masses. Who knows? Marriage at the time would have made him procrastinate all this even more. Did you know in an earlier birth, Sundarar was actually an attendant of Lord Shiva in Kailasha? At the time, there arose a desire in Sundarar's mind to marry two of Parvati's attendants called Aninditi and Kamalini. This was the main reason for Sundarar to be born on earth. Grandad used to tell me that Shiva wanted to ensure Sundarar's marriage happens to the right partners. Kamalini was reborn as Paravayar in Tiruvarur and Aninditi as Sangliyar in Tondainadu, which is current day Tiruvattriyur. Paravayar at least was mutually in love with Sundarar. So a gentle push in her dreams about getting married to Sundarar straight away helped. But Sangliyar was disinterested in marriage and had an intense devotion to Shiva and Parvati. So, as Thambiran Thoran, a dear friend of the Lord, Shiva helped out Sundarar at a later time in his life for marriage. Shiva himself went as a messenger to ensure the alliance happened. So, he did both, stop the marriage when it was not yet time and mediate the marriage when it was the right time. This is the core symbolism the story teaches. When it is time to study, one should really postpone everything else. When it is time for other important things like career or marriage, then that should take total priority. All that is fine. Now, where are we on that homework? Wait, wait, Pa. You have told me what happens if we postpone good things. But you haven't told me why one procrastinates. Hey, thief fellow. After hearing all this, you are still procrastinating, no? Okay, one last point I will make. 
It is important to understand the science behind procrastination. First, we set some expectations as to how our life should be. And we are very careful to make it as cozy and full of chilling in the vibe. But life is not like that. Sometimes what you plan happens. But mostly, life throws a spanner right into the works. Your best laid plans go out the window. Pay attention here. This is the critical place. First you are stuck with unmet expectations and then comes a crossroad. Here you are presented with two options. A choice of doing the necessary or the right thing or something else which you feel will give you back the chilling in the vibe. Here the right thing needs to be done. 90% of us choose the path that takes us further. This is how procrastination occurs. We make life a sequence of expectations without consulting with reality or necessity. Do the necessary thing first. This is the secret. When you do things this way, you are full of enthusiasm and joy because you are not worried about what happens later. Babies are like this. They always do everything now. That's why when their mothers say things like, I will get you a chocolate next Friday, they don't get it. They want it now. They are always in the now. The secret is this. When you are in the now, you will never procrastinate. Did you get all of this? I did. But how do I do it? How? Just look at our saints. They are always in the now. We can learn this skill to never procrastinate from them. You know, there's a very lovely story where even the great Lord Krishna was made to wait by a devotee who refused to procrastinate. Who who? Tell no. Mm-hmm. Maths homework. Okay, fine. And then you can hear it first on Ancient Anecdotes on your favorite podcast streaming providers. Tune in every week for a brand new episode.